Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the HFCL Limited Q2 FY23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by ICICI Securities Limited. We have with us on the call Mr. Mahindra Nahata, Managing Director and Promoter, Mr. V R Jain, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Manoj Baid, Company Secretary, Mr. Amit Agarwal, Head Investor Relations. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahendra Nahata. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to HFCL's annual call for quarter two of financial year 2023. I truly appreciate and express my gratitude for making it to HFCL's earnings call for second quarter or first half of financial year 2023. I'm sure that you got a chance to go through our financial results, price release, and investor presentation, which are available on the website of the company and also on the website of Stock Exchange. For HFCL, quarter two of financial year 23 has turned out to be quite promising. We were able to continue on our sustainable growth path, which was fueled by some key product launches, including world's first open source Wi-Fi 7 access points, 5G 88R macro radio unit, and 5G lab service during India Mobile Congress 2022, South Asia's largest digital forum. As a technology-driven enterprise, there is a significant thrust on innovating future 5G products for which we have collaborated with industry leaders like Qualcomm. This will create huge opportunities for our new products based on 5G technologies like 5G 88R macro radio unit, 5G indoor and outdoor small cell, and 5G millimeter wave fixed wireless access customer premise equipment products in the domestic and global markets. The other strategic priority during this quarter was on expansion in key global markets, including United States and Europe, to further support our strategic direction to become a product-led global player in optical fiber cables and telecom products and solutions space. By winning some key orders from Reliance, Retail, BSNL, and Railtel, we have been able to close quarter two of financial year 23 with an order book of more than rupees 5,200 crores. The global macro environment continues to be challenging and dynamic. However, with the advent of 5G, the opportunity landscape for manufacturers in the telecom and technology industry looks promising and has grown many fold. It has also given rise to a spike in demand for optical fiber cables and telecom and networking products. The deployment of a robust 5G infrastructure in the next couple of quarters will enable enterprises to embark on the digital transformation journey across the sectors. The current global demand for optical fiber cable is 600 million fiber kilometer equivalent cable. Since over 95% demand is witnessed in global markets, and given the competitiveness of our portfolio in optical fiber cable, equipment, and end-to-end -end network solutions that aspire to cater to more markets and more customers. The development of revolutionary yet indigenous technology and products has positioned Indian companies like us in the forefront of global technology leadership. We have already established a successful and strong footprint in 30-plus countries, serving 80-plus clients globally in optical fiber cables and telecom products. We have our employees in Dubai, France, Germany, England, US, Kenya, to further widespread our presence and deepen our customer reach. Apart from this, we have also appointed dealers and distributors in many countries to cater global demand. Over the next three years, we aim to build upon our global customer relations and export footprints expeditiously and emerge as a large global player in this space. Our export revenue has grown by 88% in quarter two of financial year 23 on year-to-year -year basis. 
in this half year of financial year 23 export revenue stood at 376 crores compared to 171 crores in h1 of financial year 22 showing an increase of 120% we are all well well on our mission to double the export revenue during the current financial year this trend is expected to continue in coming years as well zooming into the indian context in order to create a strong 5g network infrastructure in india the telecom industry will witness an investment of rupees 3.5 to 4 lakh crores in next 5 years to facilitate 5g services roll out indian telcos are estimated to spend between 1.5 to 2.5 billion dollars on optical fiber cables alone in the next 3 to 4 years the domestic optical fiber cable market environment continues to be strong with the current market demand of optical fiber cable products at 35 to 40 million fiber kilometers per annum which is expected to grow significantly over the next few years on account of creation of 5g network across the country expansion of existing 4g networks deployment of fiber to the home networks implementation of bharat net projects which will lead to all the villages of the country being connected by optical fiber cable and creation of multiple data centers across the length and breadth of the country in india bharat net alone will lead to an opportunity of laying 16 lakh kilometers of optical fiber cable transmitting to almost 50 million fiber kilometers there is tremendous opportunity in global markets as well we have witnessed that the governments of leading economies including united states united kingdom germany and in europe are investing heavily on building robust fiber connectivity for the deployment of 5g network and fttts networks <coughs> the global market demand of optical fiber cable is about 600 million fiber kilometer per annum and it is estimated to grow to 1000 million fiber kilometer per annum over the next 5 years we also see immense opportunities for telecom and networking production and system integration across the global globe as part of 5g rollouts especially in markets like europe and us we have identified europe and us to be the key markets to focus on for further deepening our global footprints during this quarter we also entered into a crucial partnership with qualcomm for design and development of 5g millimeter wave fixed wireless access customer transfer equipment products and 5g outdoor small cell product development all these initiatives and significant alliances will enable hfcn to expand its 5g product portfolio by launching various products gradually for india and global markets and these products shall enhance 5g user experience and contribute for efficient utilization of 5g spectrum another significant highlight in our participation at the india mobile congress this year the largest digital technologies forum in south asia with our honorable prime minister inaugurating the launch of 5g at the event the world witnessed every key telecom and technology players showcasing their latest and most innovative solutions hfcl took this opportunity to launch some significant new offerings including world's first open source wifi 7 access points this is launch <coughs> your company the world's first and first oem in india to launch open source wifi 7 access points designed to deliver extremely high throughput generating speed of more than 10 gigabits per second with a strong background of r&d our line of wifi 7 products is bound to enable telecom operators to deliver better user experience than earlier being a step closer to metaverse At the India Mobile Congress, we also launched the first product from our 5G product family, 5G 88R Macro Radio Unit, which is modular in design and can be easily customized to support any sub-6 gigahertz frequency band to address the global markets. 5G is bound to accelerate the adoption of virtualization and cloud-native technologies. Our next-generation radio unit combines the power of VRAN based on open standards to accelerate. 5G deployment 5G lab as a service was another significant launch at the Indian Mobile Congress HFC is one of the few companies in the country to launch 5G lab as telecom operators are adopting multi vendor networks 
based on cloud native technologies for faster and cost effective rollout of 5G services and for improved user experience. Our lab as a service situated in Bangalore will provide an automated test environment for the private sector, academia, and government to work together on product innovations from concept to reality, thereby accelerating rollout of 5G solutions and services, both India and globally. I would also like to mention that STL Limited, our material subsidiary, has established a state-of-the-art polymer compounding facility as backward integration at its Hosur plant in Tamil Nadu for manufacturing of polyfin-based compounds of various grades and colors, which are required as raw material for manufacturing of optical fiber cables. With our optical fiber capacity expansion coupled with the vast opportunity landscape, this backward integration will enable us to improve our profitability and with availability of multiple grades of polymer, it will further help us to tap more customers in domestic and global markets. Let me now brief you on key performance metrics of quarter two of financial year 23. Revenue of Q2 financial year 23 stood at 1173 crores as compared to 1051 crores in Q1 of the financial year 23 and 1122 crores of Q2 of financial year 22. EBITDA for the quarter at rupees 175 crores is as compared to 130 crores in quarter one and 173 crores in quarter two of FI22. EBITDA margin stands at 14.88% for the quarter two of financial year 23 as compared to 12.35% of quarter one. And it stood at 15.44% in quarter two of FI22. For FI22, for, for quarter two FI23, profit after tax stands at 84 crores. For quarter two FI23, profit after tax stands at rupees 84 crores as compared to 53 crores of quarter one of FI23 and 86 crores of quarter two of FI22. Pat margin stands at 7.18% in quarter two as compared to as compared to 5.05% in quarter one of FI23 and 7.66% in quarter two of FI22. Segment revenue of telecom products during the quarter stood at 671 crores as compared to 620 crores. From the above financial performance, you would kindly appreciate that on the backdrop of easing supply chain disruption and improvement in input costs, we have been able to demonstrate healthy growth in our revenue and margins over the last quarter. We believe that our revenue and margins will continue to grow with all initiatives taken in the last few quarters. We have also applied for design link incentive scheme for telecom and networking products and are committed to invest a sum of rupees 425 crores over a period of four years. We expect to receive the approval from the government anytime now. And this investment will support various stages of the development and deployment of futuristic range of technology products and solutions. With a major focus on the 5G revolution, HFCL is witnessing a transformation towards emerging as a high tech global enterprise and integrated next gen network solution provider. As a result, a leader in telecom equipment optical fiber cable manufacturing in the country, we will continue to offer more robust and high-tech solutions with open source technology. So to conclude, I would like to say that as we are already witnessing a strong demand for our 5G products, optical fiber cables, and integrated network solutions, both in India and globally, we will continue to leverage our capabilities and continue with our strategy of tapping new customers, new geographies, and new products. Thank you once again for your team participation. With this, I conclude my opening remarks and open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Um, uh, I, uh, my questions are, uh, you have built a very good uh, defense portfolio. So my questions are uh, on that part of the business. Uh, if you can talk about a uh, little bit uh, on the electronic fuses and electrical optical devices, uh, what is the order book like, where we are in terms of uh, scaling that business, uh, that would be helpful. Yeah, Aman, thank you very much uh, for a good question. In fact, you know, as you would know, defense equipment being developed and being put in operation takes a lot of time because of the very rigorous testing going on. Uh, in terms of our electronic fuses, uh, we have already offered it to the Indian Army for testing. And uh, the testing work is still in progress, you know. It has still not ended. There have been certain issues in testing which... Uh, the Indian industry has uh, gone back to government and uh, told them to redo the testing because of certain issues. So those work is in progress. Uh, results are not yet out. And uh, I expect uh, good business emerged from electronic fuses, not only in India, but abroad also because we have IPR of this. But yes, there are no orders at, available at this point of time because this testing and all that takes a long amount of time in different sources. And same stands for electro-optic devices, where we have got a small order from Northern Command, which is under execution. But larger orders, uh, we have participated in tenders, which are, results are not yet out. So it will take a certain amount of time still. But as I have been telling earlier also, we expect revenues to start from defense products in the next financial year. That is 23, 24 only. This is the time for development and testing. Revenues start flowing in from 2324. Oh, sure, sir. Okay. A little bit of clarification. So, Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Vich. The audio is uh, breaking from your line, so please check. Yeah. Uh, is it better? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, sir. I, I, I just wanted more clarification, sir. Uh, we had mentioned that we had bid for 5 million fuses. Uh, so that order is cancelled or what has happened to that order? No, no, no. The testing is in progress. Testing is in progress. There have been certain issues by for the all the Indian private companies who had participated and we have gone back to government and asked them to do redo the testing part of it. Redo the testing part. And that is, is in, that is under consideration in government. It has still not been finalized. Neither the order has been finalized on anybody, nor the financial bits have been as yet opened. Uh, okay, sir. And you have mentioned in the presentation that this, uh, say for example, electronic fuses can be 0.39 billion in FI25. Sir, in this year, what is the current size of the market current, uh, in FI22 or 23? In the current financial year, no orders have been placed on the private industry. Government is buying from the PSUs only. So we don't know the real size of the market, but yes, from the uh, two years or 25 and all that, you know, whatever you have mentioned in the presentation, that holds good. And how much market share do you think we can uh, gather uh, out of that 0.39 billion uh, market size? And how many private players have bid for the same tender, if you can talk about Three that. private players have bid for that, three private players. And uh, it's very difficult to, I mean, at the moment to say the market size because, you know, the tender would be awarded to one company or maybe government later on defense to multiple companies, we do not know. So it's very difficult to predict that how much market share we will have. But yes, you know, numerically, I think we should expect some 20, 25% market share at least. Uh, sure. And if you can mention the names of the other players who have been? Uh, other players have been apart from us. Uh, I think HBL from Hyderabad is there. And there is one more company from near Delhi, which I don't remember the name, but yes, there is one, one more company. There are three uh, private companies. Is it, is it for A and Enterprises? I don't remember the name, Aman. I don't remember that. Okay. 
sure sure that that helps and uh, uh, so on the fuses side sir uh, there are different kind of fuses uh, on your website you have mentioned proximity fuses and all those things so we have developed all these products in house yeah these are all developed by our own company with help from some uh, some uh, foreign uh, partners who are r&d contractors and the ipr completely rests with the company so you can call it a in house development okay but you had mentioned in the presentation we are the only indian company to do it so the other two players uh, uh, don't one company at least, uh, yes one company at least i know they have got a foreign mm-hmm. collaboration uh, okay. the company near delhi the hbl i do not know very sure that whether it's their own development or whether they have got uh, any partnership i'm not too sure but at that time when we said this in the uh, presentation that is all these kind of things have been developed by us it was true but hbl i do not know at the moment that whether it is a uh, there any partnership or local development so sure, sure. and you mentioned next year you expect some revenue so if you can quantify ke how the scaling can happen say fi 24 what kind this, of revenue this, this 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 all depends upon when the tender is open amar okay but do we expect a say 100 200 um, crore kind of there will be more questions uh, you know you can come back in the queue once uh, you know i think uh, there are too many questions you can come back in sure, the queue. so but your last I'll, question I'll what, what is your last question you can ask yeah sir my my last question was uh, uh, on the say electro optics part uh, so the market is quite big you have mentioned 3 billion but we are only developing say example one product i don't know how many products you are developing say night vision goggles we are developing as per your presentation not goggles not goggles it is not a goggles it is a night vision sight mounted on a rifle or a machine gun it's a night vision sight not a goggles yeah sorry my mistake sir so you have mentioned electronics fuses may we can maybe get 20 25% market share but electro optics is I, a much I, bigger I, market I, I, i am again expecting i am not sure whether it will 20% 15% or 50% but that is what the reasonable expectation is in terms of electro optic devices uh, you know there are multiple multiple players in the country there are six seven different players in my opinion so again you know one should expect some 10 15% market share on a numerical basis but then it, it will depend upon tender to tender how much you will Thank you, Mr. Vich. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hardik Vyas from Economic Times. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, we have been talking a lot about the 5G opportunity and uh, things seem uh, things seem very. Uh, Mr. Uh, Vyas, sorry to interrupt you. Please use the handset mode. The audio. Yeah, I'm on the handset. I'm on the handset. Can you hear me now? Hello. Hardik, uh, please speak a little loudly. yeah so uh, uh do we uh, when do we see the execution for the 5g uh, uh products happening and the 5g services as in laying down of the network for uh, uh, uh various network operators and of course the uh, bharat net happening uh, how soon do we see the execution happening for uh, 5g look you know bharat net and the 5g are two separate issues uh, bharat net is not envisaging any 5g bharat net you know government is very keenly working on this at present as i understand and they are looking at a model of epc kind of a model where they will select uh, companies out of a tender to build this uh, bharat net network which is connecting every village of the country through fiber optic cable now the cable will reach to some center point of the village but from there on i think government would ask operators to give connectivity to different uh, households uh, on, you know uh, on on a commercial basis so what this project enters is laying down fiber optic cable and related equipment uh, to all these villages so this does not contain 5g 5g may come later on in this area now coming to the 5g products as i said uh, we have we will be putting it in the operators uh, uh you know networks on a trial basis starting 2 to 3 months from now and when the trials are over uh you know if operators require some change we will have to do that but that is a normal issue because different operators have different software and uh, graphic user interface issues which will be cha- require change as per their requirement and we expect revenue to start coming up in the ne- beginning of the q1 of the next financial year uh okay 
so uh, as i understand it right uh, in the current revenues and up to now there has not been any 5g component it's been a regular no, business apart from 5g yes 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 you are absolutely right this there is no 5g component at the moment we have launched the product just recently it has to go to the field trials on the operators networks and then the production and then the revenue it's a bit of a few months cycle but okay, we are so very well on the finish here okay yeah, and uh, very Okay, sir. My second question is on the uh, on uh, uh, the software defined radios. Uh, how uh, how big is the opportunity, and when are we likely to tap it in in terms of uh, revenues? And uh, so, when when do we see it in numbers? Look, software defined radio is for the army, and that development is in progress. And we are to submit samples in sometime in December to Indian Army after development. so and then the sample would be field tried and you know tenders would be there so i think that he's the belief to say that uh, major market opportunity for this software defined radio is 24 25 but oh. the market size is very large in a sense that you know majority of the radios of indian army maybe the all of them will be switched on to the software defined radio in few years time the total market opportunity if i remember well is not less than 40000 crores Okay. Okay. So, ah, uh, we ah, uh, so the next year is going to be five G heavy in terms of execution and revenues and margins and everything will be driven on the back of exports and five G, more or less. If I am understanding it right. Look, in the next year, you know, we expect good amount of revenue to come from not only five G but other products also, telecom products which we have. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so the current it's business plus five G. Yeah, current business and the new products which we are also doing right now, which is the routers, switches. Those are also the products which are required in 5G and non-5G applications also, or in all kind of uh, network. So those products coupled with 5G, and then of course our current range of products will bring in revenue for the next year. And Bharat Net as well would be Bharat Net as as well would contribute to the revenues and uh, profitability in the next year, right? Look, you know, while doing our internal projections for next year, we have not yeah. taken into account Bharat Net as yet. Once okay. the Bharat Net comes, you know, it may be we may be able to improve our internal projections. Internal but projection. as yet, we have not taken that into account. Okay, thank you so much. That is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Shah from KSC Securities. Please go ahead. yeah good evening gentlemen so congratulations uh, again on the exciting presentation and explanation so my question was uh, uh, more regarding towards uh, the opportunity on uh, rail networking which we have not highlighted uh, in your comment that was number 1 and second was i want to uh, repeat, i want uh, mr sorry. sir repeat uh, which networking rail 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 or oh, rail networking okay yeah. and and connect yeah, that, the... yeah my question was regarding that you throw out some uh, of uh, uh, doing a capex of 425 crores with some government can you elaborate on that do we need to understand on that sir okay so on the railway network good question mr shah you know in a, a few minutes presentation i could not highlight every opportunity but that's one that's one area we are doing good business uh in, in fact uh, as i've been saying we are implementing couple of networks abroad in india also we are working on six or seven different railway projects uh which are subcontracted to us by the key turnkey players but now directly we are implementing the metro network of uh, telecom network of the metros of so kanpur and agra uh, this is directly awarded to hfc of so 200 some crores of uh, uh Uh, uh 200 uh, some you know 230 crores or so of uh, uh that particular railway network we have also participated directly for surat and andabad uh, the metro rail networks telecom uh, metro uh, telecom networks so then we are going to participate in couple of more such opportunities so i am sure this uh, re- revenue from railways uh, telecom networking should result in get, giving us a reasonable revenue every year something like 500 crores or so i reasonably expect with so many tenders we have participated so many more opportunities are there we should be able to get a reasonably good amount of revenue and you know uh, 
government is going to modernize telecom and signaling network of entire railways in any case. So there will be more such opportunities coming up. And we are developing this business. And uh, we, we have emerged as one of the leading companies in the country, which is doing such kind of a networking for railways, uh, which is, uh, uh, as I've said, multiple places we are doing in India, couple of places we are doing abroad. Now, coming to your second question, 425 crore, this, of course, includes expenditure on R&D also. Mm -hmm. This is, as per this DLI scheme, design-led, you know, equipment manufacturing incentive scheme which government has announced. Mm -hmm. And we have projected an investment of 425 crores, which includes R&D investment, because the DLI scheme allows R&D as an investment, as a part of the overall uh, incentive scheme. So some 425 crores is R&D, and the new infrastructure which we will create for manufacturing telecom products is what put together is 425 crores. This DLI scheme is under consideration of government. And I understand uh, whatever discussion I had uh, with the government officials during India Mobile Congress, they are expected to announce uh, finalization of this scheme. Uh, you know, I think at mostly within uh, next one month they should announce it. That is what I expect, and I expect that HFCL will be definitely be a part of it. That's great. So, sir, we are entering into an exciting period, as you cited, was the 5G, defense, rail, this DLI scheme. Then, what incremental capex we need for next two three years, and how we line up that? Look, you know, some of the capex which we are uh, implementing projects right now, this uh, fiber optic cable manufacturing uh, capacity expansion and the fiber uh, manufacturing expansion. Part of the money we already raised in the last QIP, and the balance is being funded through the debt from the banks. And uh, the next phase of expansion, when we do, of course, we have not decided the numbers as yet, but it is under consideration. But whenever we do, it would be a mixture of debt and equity. Okay, so will that be a major uh, capex needed for that uh, to participate in the growth story? Uh, well, I don't know at the moment the current, um, you know, the, what amount of capex would be required, but it would not be so big, uh, you know, that is out, you know, outnumbers the uh, size of the company. It would be within the reasonable numbers. Understand, understand. right, sir? Thank you. Thanks for explanation. Would be really helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bala Subramanian from Arihant Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Bala Subramanian. Yeah, Mr. Bala Subramanian. Good morning. Please go ahead. Sir, I'm audible. Sir, I have a few questions regarding the R&D. Past few years, we have spent around 126 crores. Right now, we are focusing around 150 crore target. So uh, apart from 150 crore, we have to spend the remaining amount for CapEx, right, sir, for this year? So what, what kind of quantum we may expect for the next uh, six months? Look, you know, this year's uh, expenditure of R&D is 150 crores we have estimated, and uh, that is what is the burn rate is at this point of time. Because we are doing R&D in multiple areas, as I have explained. Wi-Fi, uh, UDR, 5G, routers, switches, software-defined radios. Some of the R&D is being done by, really by our team. Some of the places R&D is being done by the contract R&D players, you know, which are working for us and designing equipment for us with our own IPR. So all this put together is the amount of expenditure we have talked about. Now, when you say that uh, uh, if you're asking a question of 425 crores, how it is going to be spent, as I said, part of that would be R&D, part of that would be capital infrastructure. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I'm looking into CapEx uh, plan. Right now, we are into 10 million fiber kilometer for optic fiber capacity. So it is mentioned around 22, uh, uh, the target, million fiber kilometer. So, so what is the timeline for that? Uh, I think, you know, that expansion is going to happen in Hyderabad, in our current facility. And the timeline, you know, the work is already starting. I think it should take about 12 months to complete this. About 12 months. About 12 give, months. Or take, give or take a couple of months here then, but about 12 months. Okay, sir. Okay. Because, you know, the construction time and delivery time of fiber, 
cyber manufacturing equipment is very very high at this moment because of the worldwide demand that uh, which has happened the delivery time of machines you know it takes almost 9 months to a year and then the installation commissioning and the construction of building will itself take a long time because the 45 meter high towers and all that it takes a lot of time but within 12 months you should be able to commission it okay sir okay got it sir in terms of defense exports the market size around 12500 to 13000 crore and it is expected around 42000 crores by fy25 it's almost uh, more than 3x uh, but uh, we are focusing on growing double x so we can expect more or uh, it is sufficient uh... no 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 uh, i think uh, you know uh, i think we are talking on two different things you know we are not talking of growing exports in defense we are talking of growing exports in fiber optic cable and telecom equipment you know if you really look at you know, our our exports have grown up you know it's a good question but uh, in this slide differently i can answer you know export we have been putting a lot of emphasis uh, our export if you look at in year ending march 21 financial year 21 was just 193 crores it increased to 353 crores in 2022 financial year 21 22 now in this year itself in the first six months itself we have crossed that we have to 376 crores so as i have been saying We will double our exports this year from the last year 353 crores. We are on the track. The first six months itself, we have gone to 376 crores. So we have absolutely no reason to say that we will not be able to grow to 100% from the last financial year. So we are working on a target of 750 crores. Our run rate is very, very much within that uh, target, and we should be able to double our exports. We have a high thrust on exports, you know, which is cable and equipment. Right now, it is more of cable, but as I said, from the next year onwards, we will start exporting our equipment also. Some export has started this year, but major export will happen in the next year. So, with increase in export of fiber optic cable and then the export of uh, telecom equipment, we expect to continue this trend of increased exports every year uh, uh, from our company. Okay, sir. Okay, got it. Sir, you are talking about uh, that polymer or polythene-based uh, uh, manufacturing plan for uh, backward electricians. Could you please uh, throw more more uh, light on that? Yeah, sure. You know, look, uh, we increase, we use this plastic compounds for manufacture of fiber optic cable like HDPE. We all our factories put together. We have about consumption of two and half crore kgs of uh, this HDPE polymer. For manufacture of cable, now you get uh, natural color uh, this uh, HDP compound from the refinery. Now earlier what we used to do, we, there are people who do the compounding, making it uh, in a different colors because in fiber optic cable, different people want different colors and different tubes have got different colors. So you need different colors. So we used to buy it from different uh, people who do the compounding and then sell it to us. So they were intermediaries. So we did, we did the economics, and we said that if we do ourselves this uh, compounding, we will save a lot of money. Roughly about six rupees a kg, about six rupees a kg, we would be saving by doing the compounding ourselves. This means on two and a half crore kgs, you will be saving something like uh, uh, you can say eighteen, nineteen crores, fifteen to eighteen crores, six to seven rupees a kg per year by doing the compounding ourselves. Whereas the whole project cost. About 17 and 18 crores, something like that. So by investing about 17, 18 crores, you would be saving 16, 16 crores every year. So is ROI just one year? So this saves us money and gives us better profitability and better competitiveness. And this production has already started in Hussur in our uh, in our plant, which is owned by STL, our subsidiary, and uh, this manufacturing has already started. Okay, sir. Okay, got it. Uh, thank you, sir. Next to Samir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav Kandwala from Kandwala Securities. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Congratulations for the fantastic results. So, two questions. Prime of AC would like to understand the latest news which came on HFCL and Qualcomm. Like, what is the opportunity for HFCL? And if you could give us some fair bit of idea in terms of this 5G outdoor small cell development. 
and how that will benefit HFCL and Qualcomm uh, in this entire 5G uh, network uh, opportunity. So, and the second question is, uh, if you could give me uh, some fair bit of idea on the order book. And uh, in the presentation, you mentioned that you, there is some USD breakup uh, given so and the export market. So if you could give me a clarity on that, please. Yeah, thank you, Pranav. First of all, let me come to the 5G product development. Uh, we have done two agreements with Qualcomm, not one, two. Uh, okay. One is, of course, uh, this 5G outdoor small cell. And second is uh, 5G uh, fixed wireless, uh, uh, you know, access terminal. Now, let me explain both the products. Outdoor small cell is required to fill in the gaps in the network. You know, when you do the, when the telecom operators do their networking and install large cells, there are gaps in between where the signals are not able to reach. Particularly in 5G, the spectrum use is of a higher level, you know. In 2G, 3G, we were using up to 2.3 gigahertz in 3G, 4G, for example. Uh, here it has become 3.5 gigahertz. So there are gaps in the holes in the network at various places. Or wherever the capacity requirement is high, operators start putting small cells instead of large cells. It has happened quite a large scale in 4G networks also. A huge amount of small cells have been put by the operators. So the requirement of outdoor small cells in 4G would be even higher. So we are going to manufacture, design and manufacture these 5G small cells. Uh, for outdoor application, using this Qualcomm platform, Qualcomm uh, platform, you will be uh, designing and manufacturing this small cell. And market is expected to be very, very high, India and abroad both, where, because 5G networks are being implemented all over. The second the product which we have done is the fixed wireless access CPE, again using the Qualcomm platform. Now, FWA CPE is required in the places where you need fiber-like speed at home or at office without fiber. You know, where what would happen, this FWA CPE would be acting on the 5G network, would install at home, taking throughput from 5G network, it will give a fiber-like connectivity at home. So operators are doing FTTH as well as they would do FWA also. Now, FTTH, they would do at a place where the dense requirement of fiber optic connection is required that they would lay down fiber. Wherever the requirement is not so big, you know, that's part because few, few people would want fiber-like connectivity in homes or offices, where it is not economical to lay down fiber network, that they would be using FWA, where without laying the fiber-like fiber optic network from 5G network is, itself, you will be getting high-speed connectivity at home or enterprise. And the market of FWA CPE is expected to be very, very high all over the world. Billions of dollars of market is expected of FWA CPE. This is a second partnership we are doing with Qualcomm. Okay. We expect okay. to launch this product from the uh, beginning of the... Uh, uh, we expect to put in the field trial with the operators from the beginning of the next uh, calendar year. Revenue expected from the, the first quarter of the next financial year. So what so would be the revenue the, opportunity on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis or year-on-year -year basis for HFCL? Uh, for these two products? Yes. Well, you know, it's very difficult to target, uh, give you a number at this point of time. But I can say that, you know, it would be hundreds of crores. It would be hundreds of crores. Okay. Okay. And uh, your second question was on exports. Now, as I uh, said in the answer to my previous question of the gentleman, then, you know, we have been putting a lot of emphasis on exports because, you know, if you look at the world market and the Indian market, Indian market is probably, though it's a big market, but probably 5% of the size of the world market, whether it is fiber optic cable or telecom equipment, 95% of the market sits outside our country. So while putting a lot of effort and emphasis on the Indian market, we need to go out of the country to access this 95% of the market also. So if you are able to explore or get into this small percentage of this 95% market, you are able to increase your sales. Now, particularly when you have your own products, your own technologies, your own IPR, you are free to go and market anywhere if your technology is at par with uh, other um, uh, manufacturers. So what we have seen, uh, we started with fiber optic cable, for example, and as I have mentioned in the figures, we are doubling, almost doubling every year. 21 
financial year 193 crores and the two it became 353 crores this half year itself it has become 376 crores so we are on path to reach to 750 crores which i talked about uh, uh, in my last presentations also and we expect to continue this trend in future also because in, there will be increase in export of fiber optic cable as well as then there would be export of equipment also so export is something which you know uh, we are putting a lot of emphasis because uh, because that's the 95 percent of the world market okay and if you could give me a, a slight break up in terms of your order book currently yeah uh, current order book is about 5000 uh, about 5300 crores uh, okay. which comprises of uh, government and non government both almost 55% uh, is government 45% is non government and um, we are we are uh, you know getting regularly repeat orders from our customers so we keep on getting 100 crores 200 crores 50 crores 40 crores 60 crores we keep on getting orders our orders are have a regular flow but the current order book is as i said 5280 crores Okay, fine. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sahil Sangvi from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, Mr. Sangvi. Yes, congratulations, sir, uh, on, on a very fine set of uh, financials and uh, the, the opportunity ahead looks very encouraging. Uh, I just wanted to understand two things, sir. One, uh, on the order book that you have announced, how much uh, is that uh, coming from exports, like current order book from exports? Yeah, well, exports, you know, you don't get large orders in one shot. You know, orders keep on flowing in. So, uh, the current order book from export out of 5,300 crores should be about some crores or so. But, you know, they keep on flowing. Orders, you keep on supplying. Orders keep on coming. And we are well within our target to reach to 750 crores, as I was explaining just recently. So, orders keep on flowing. So, it should be well over 300 crores at this point of time. And this will be largely uh, OFC orders? Yeah, this, will, this is largely OFC at this point of time. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, sir. And secondly, sir, uh, um, I mean, uh, we have some pledge shares right now. And uh, um, I just wanted to understand two things on that front, sir. Uh, one, uh, no, 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 no. There are no pleasures at this moment, Mr. Sangvi. There are no pleasures, zero. It is only a non disposable undertaking to the institutions when you take loan from the financial institutions. They take a non disposable undertaking from the promoters. That, you know, promoters should not sell their shares and walk without informing the institutions and taking their approval. That's a normal procedure. So it's a non disposable undertaking. There is no pledge at all, zero pledge. Okay, okay, because on the uh, on the exchange, how it shows up is uh, it shows up as a pledge share. So, uh, I mean, we are not liable, right, in any ways, in, uh, in case of any. No pledge. It is a non disposable undertaking. There is no pledge. It is otherwise encumbered, sir, because exchange does not permit us to, uh, whether it is pledged or otherwise encumbered, there is only one column. So, it is basically not pledged, it is otherwise encumbered. That's all by way of non disposable undertaking. Non disposable undertaking, there is no pledge at all. Got it, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Sancheti from Mania Finance. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Yeah, yeah, Dipesh, Mr. Sancheti, you are very loud and clear. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, regarding the fundraising which we had on 2nd September we had uh, mentioned about raising uh, of about 650 crores uh, but after that there has been no update so the audio is breaking from your line I'll repeat again do I need to repeat yeah, please. please go ahead uh, I said that uh, on 2nd of September, I mentioned to the exchanges that we are going to raise about 650 crores. But uh, after that, there has been no updates. Like we, we uh, gave warrants to promoters and uh, non-promoters. There was a separate uh, 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 approval of 650 crores. When is that expected? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Sanchez, you know, warrants have been issued to promoters and uh, 
key ma- uh, key management personnel also subscribe to the warrants you know which speaks of confidence the promoters and the key leadership team of the company has in the performance of the company so that has happened the next uh question of yours whether the fund raise is going to happen and when we are all at the planning stage at this point of time what are the kind of capex required which are the kind of expansion or backward integration we have to do once it is finalized of course we will come back to you uh, is it uh, expected uh, to happen uh, in this financial year it is under consideration mr sanchet i will not be able to say more than that it is under consideration so final decision has to be taken by board but it is under consideration at this point of time okay okay and uh, thank you thank you so much if there is any other question i'll get back to you thank you sure thank you the next question is from the line of swapna kamath from nsfo please go ahead yeah uh, good evening sir so my question is on uh, so as i understand we want our company to be more a products driven company and less of this turnkey contracts and as we have seen that this part of the revenue has been coming down uh, consistently and that is what is our objective as per your previous calls so uh, but uh, i just wanted to get a sense on where do you see this number stabilizing on the turnkey contracts that you know uh, then we will see that this amount of the revenues will continue steady state and uh, because uh, we are doing some products work so this much of a uh, turnkey will be part of uh, this overall business or uh, how should we look at the uh, business as such and also on the uh, capital employed that is deployed in the turnkey contracts so that is substantial so uh, do we see some amount of cash getting released from there which can be used for our capex etc which might be blocked uh, because of few debtors uh, uh, that yeah shobhna yeah uh, very good very good two questions and i answer each of them you know we i have been saying from the beginning that you know uh, last few time calls you would have heard that you know, we want to be more of a product company less of a project company and that you know what we decided to go in a manner it is really happened in that way if you look at the numbers in financial year 31st march ended on 31st march 21 our revenue from projects was 27% and from the projects was 73% now it became 43% from projects and 57% from projects in financial year ended on 31st march 22 So products became 27 to 43 percent. Now, if you look at this year, in the uh, you know year to date, the first six months, if you look at our revenue from the products has been 58 percent, and projects is 42 percent. Now, just go back and compare. What was 27 percent in 2021 year ended 31st March is 58 percent now, and the project revenue is 73 percent is 42 percent now. is a remarkable change and we expect to continue on this trend and further increase our revenue percentage from products in the next financial year because of this uh, different products of 5g wifi ubr which is coming in production this trend is con- going to continue and our revenue from products will further increase but i am not saying that we will not do projects we will do projects but which are which are not highly cash negative you know we won't do such projects which are highly cash negative because doing such projects makes us you know heavy burden on the cash flows of the company so that's why we have gone for more revenue from the products which has really fortified that approach and less on the projects now coming to the second question yes we have a uh, very you know uh, reasonably good amount of money as you know i would not say stuck but getting delay in project particularly the uh, project the defense project which we are implementing uh, we are still have a receivable of more than 1000 crores now we have started uh, you know implementation uh, not in you know, switching on of various parts of this network and the money has started flowing in this used to be this 1000 plus crores today used to be more than 1500 crores about a year ago now it has come to about 1000 or 1100 crores and we expect that by march end of march uh, this financial year this and a full network will be switched on full network will be switched on uh, two more parts of the network we are switching on 
uh, within next 15 days, two have been switched on, two more would be switched on into, uh, in, in this, uh, uh, maybe within less than a month. So by March, we expect to complete and then reach major part of this money within next four to six months time. So with this major release of this money, which is about 1,000 crore or so, a uh, lot of money would flow back into the company, which will decrease the pressure on working capital and release more money for CapEx also. We are right on track. We have a good question that, yes, uh, there is a delay in payment for this particular project, not because of any fault of the company, but because of customer did not do its own part of work, which is construction of infrastructure on which we were to install equipment and various other reasons related to customer, nothing to do with the company. We delayed the payment, but now we are on track and I think by March, major, major portion of this money would be realized, which will increase the cash flow of the company, which will make the money available for more working capital as well as for CapEx. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot for the detailed answer. Uh, and so I really appreciate that point and it's uh, pretty commendable that the uh, telecom products revenue run rate is now almost 671 quarterly run rate. That's uh, pretty significant from where we were. So, but sir, uh, if you can just give me an idea as to this turnkey, you said you will continue doing these contracts, but I mean, where, I mean, if you have, if we say that, you know, this is, this is the number, if we are projecting this particular uh, segment, then how do we look at it? Like, uh, I mean, what is the, uh, what is uh, like uh, number we should look at in the overall pie, like a 25% or like 15% of the overall revenues? Look, you know, when I say we will continue to do, we will continue to do which are not cash negative. Okay, so for right. example, aside, for example, I will tell you. The private operators net, so we are implementing, you know, or like for Geo, what we are doing. It's not major cash negative, you know, payments are received within 30 days and, you know, uh, there is absolutely no issue of cash flows, you know. We will, there's no reason why we cannot continue to do that. Maybe profitability right. could be low, but since the working capital investment is not there, there's no reason why we should not do that. Now, we are also looking at some contracts of this nature in export market, in European market. And maybe we would be getting some small contract in very, very soon in one of the major European countries. And we ex intend to increase our presence in international market in implementation because that is highly profitable. And uh, they are very quality conscious people. So they don't be projects to small companies. And, uh, you know, uh, profitability is much better. So we intend to increase our presence in the international market in project implementation. And international, when I say that I'm talking of developed countries like, you know, West European countries or America, you know, such kind of countries. And also government, you know, wherever the projects are, funding is poor, we will not participate into that. But wherever the funding is ensured in a manner that, um, you know, while implementation is going on, large percentage of capex is made available to us within that implementation period we would look at such projects only so i would say in terms of percentages you can say that 25 percent or so revenue would keep on coming from the project side which are less involvement of working capital and more profitable understood and so lastly one last question on the defense side uh, you mentioned about the opportunity competition etc uh, could you give a ballpark idea as to what kind of margins uh, would they would they be similar to what we earn in the telecom products or are they different in the electronic fuse and electro optics etc uh, so i think thing. you know if you say the market is you know whichever place you go defense or otherwise the market is always competitive you know there is no a cakewalk kind of a market. So I would say the margins would be similar to what you get in a uh, normal telecom business, maybe a couple of percentage or two, three percent extra, because uh, not anybody and everybody can enter into this market because of very strict entry conditions and the quality and performance conditions. So it could be two, three percent extra, some 20, 30 percent higher than what you get into uh, the normal telecom business. But yes, you know, no, market is competitive, but yes, a bit of a 20, 30% extra percentage you can get as a profit. Thank you. Ms. Kamath, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions? Yeah, thank you. I'm done. The next question is from the line of Anand Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead.
thanks for the opportunity sir and congratulations on a very good set of numbers uh, my questions are also on the defense opportunity that you have listed because that's a very exciting part and uh, the kind of entry barriers that it has uh, I'm, i'm certain that it must have taken us a very long time uh, i just want to understand what kind of capex have we done in order to be where we are right now that's my first question the second question is on the fuser side side what i what i have come to understand is that it requires approval by arde which is like an r uh, which is a, like a part of drdo so do we have the arde approval for all the three types of fuses that we are looking to make that's my first question now i will ask for the questions on look you know we have spent about 50 crores or so in development of uh, uh, this fuses and electrolytic devices this is the you know this is r and d expenditure you can call it capex and we have spent about 50 crores on that now coming to this uh, fuses you know uh, of course it requires the approval of arde and also not only that dgqa also this is directly general quality assurance in the indian army and as i said that testing has been going on and there are certain issues which are happening which the whole indian industry has protested that you know testing has to be redone and that is under consideration of the government uh, it has still not uh, been uh, totally uh, you know decided so it is under consideration the tender is yet to be opened and uh, let us see when they decided when they open so the, the questions here because i have been tracking this since a very long time because 10 years back also like these tenders had come and then you know you had all this ecil kind of colluding with mod and then there is a south african company which used to come in and supply switch, uh, su- supply these fuses to ecil so that uh, are the issues political in nature or technical in nature that is my another question and the last question, because last time it was clearly you know i don't i don't need to call it on a conf call I, I, no, no. So, i would not use the word colluding or political or all that you know that's not in my domain to comment but yes there are technical issues i would definitely say there are technical issues earlier the supply was uh, being made by ecil of course with the participation of a south african company and then of late bell has also come into picture in participation with an israeli company but our is a total own development but yes the issues are being faced are technical not uh, uh, you know i wouldn't call it political or colluding these are not the words i would use but yes technical issues are there which are being sorted out with the army whether dgqa or ard or it is you know multiple agencies are there in the army who try you know it's not dgqa or ard alone the user trials are there user themselves try so there are multiple levels of testing which is really taking time and the entry barrier <laughs> we are experiencing ourselves you know last one question on the same thing is that are the issues only limited to our company or or like you know other competitors that we have are they having different set of issues are the or are the issues common for all of us and finally you know what i have come to understand from hbl is that there is a tender for grenade fuses in which they say that you know uh, they are clear to go uh, what is our positioning there look you know the issues are technical issues are common to all the companies all the private sector companies are more or less common you know if there are 100 different technical parameters somebody will have two or somebody will have three but almost common with all uh, indian uh, you know, private sectors uh, the grenade fuses we are not part of that uh, i have not uh, 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 you know not taken part into any grenade fuse kind of a situation we are not there at all Okay, great, sir, and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayant Nahata for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for and the ladies for attending this uh, earning call of HFCL. And as I said, company is on the right path. path of growth right path of progress it has become a technology led telecom equipment products and fiber optic cable manufacturing company there is a lot of backward integration to increase the profitability again with emphasis to go into export market we are increasing our revenue from that side of the business uh, with the increase in exports of fiber optic cable and equipment in the next year we further expect to increase our market share in the export market uh we are on the right track to become a product led company which i have shown by 
the data that how we have increased our revenue from products. We are on the path of expansion of our uh, product range and also on the uh, you know size of our fiber optic cable and fiber manufacturing facility. All that would lead to uh, continue to uh, lead the company in the growth phase, which is happening today in the country with the 5G rollout, FTTS rollout, not only in India, all over the world this kind of thing is happening. So opportunities are exciting, market is big, opportunities are exciting, and the company has taken all the right steps to take part of this opportunity and grow with the market growth. The company also expects to grow uh, in the coming financial years. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect.